So what's it like living in a motel? I live in a motel in Valdez, Alaska. The town's population is about 2,000. The nearest community to Valdez is almost one and a half hours away and only has a population of around 50. I'm sure living in a motel in Valdez is very different than living in a motel in a big city in Washington or New York or California. It's going to be much safer here, and there are less tenants. During the winter, most of the restaurants and businesses in town are closed as Valdez lives and survives on summer tourism. Therefore, in the winter, you can get a motel room at a cheaper price than it would cost to rent a one-bedroom apartment. One-bedroom apartments start around $1,200 plus utilities. Motel rooms start at $1,000 with everything included. Since I was only going to be in Valdez for one winter, from October until April, it was the easiest way to find an affordable place and the cheapest way to stay here. The room itself is big enough for one person. In this video, my room is messy because I also resell on eBay and I'm packing up all of my things and getting ready to move to Anchorage. The views from the room's window are really nice. On the rare occasion when it's not snowing or raining, you can lay in bed and see waterfalls in the mountains. Whenever I walk down the hallways, it always reminds me of the Stephen King movie The Shining and I expect two little kids to come riding around the corner in big wheels. There's about 15 other long-term tenants living in this motel, and it's surprisingly quiet during the day and during the evening. Most of the long-term tenants live in the rooms at the end of the hallway. This motel is actually open during the winter, but no tourists come to Valdez at this time of the year. So there's no receptionist, no housemaid, or anyone else working here from November until about April. Most days it just feels like you're all alone in an empty motel. It's kind of fun. There are also a couple of local residents who run a small business out of two of the rooms on weekends. One is a manicurist and the other is a hairstylist. When I arrived here in early October 2023, most of the dock workers who live here from spring until fall were leaving. They always leave extra stuff in the front lobby for anyone who lives here to take. They just don't want to take it all home. It's mostly jackets and boots. The people who live in this motel year-round are from several different states. Most of them have traveled around a large portion of their lives and have jumped from state to state every couple of years. Living here now are people from California, Ohio, New York, Pennsylvania, and Florida. And there's even two people from Cuba and Puerto Rico. Most of them either work with a local cleaning business, as caretakers, in Safeway, or in the hospital. Maybe the best thing about living in this motel is you have a lot of privacy, but at the same time, everybody really treats everybody else like family or a good friend. There will always be someone who's willing to give you a lift if you need one, and if someone cooks and has leftovers, they'll ask anyone they see in the hallways if they want some food for that night. Being such a small town that's difficult to get out of in the winter, you don't need to worry about any type of crime, whether from the people living in the motel or the people living in town. Most of the long-term tenants here don't lock their doors and even leave their doors open if they run to do some errands in town. The longest tenant in this motel has been living here for about eight years. The owners are really kind not to ask anyone to leave once they stay. 
They understand most of the people living here don't have much money and would have no place to go if they were forced to leave. This is probably also a reason everyone who lives here behaves so well. It's not like a big city where if you get kicked out, you just hop on down to the next street to another motel. Options in Valdez don't really exist. And even though it's a nice, comfortable place to stay, I couldn't imagine living here more than a year. Living in one large room limits you a lot in what you can do. And I also came to the conclusion that a kitchen isn't a bad thing to have. The fun and excitement of cooking all of your meals on a hot plate and in a microwave ends about one week after you live without a kitchen. Now I'm getting ready to leave this motel and move to Anchorage, where I'll stay for a couple of months. But I'm glad I got to know the motel life and I met some fun and interesting people who have become friends. And even though it's the end of a great time I had during my first winter in Alaska, when good things end, it doesn't always have to be sad. I have plans for the next few months, and I look forward to seeing what the rest of Alaska shows me, and what my new home in Anchorage will be.